Hi, I'm Jason Sterling, and I have spent weeks now playing The Sims 4 Journey to Batu, and thought I would do a review based on that real long-term playing, tied in with how I viewed the pack from when it was first announced, and how I still view it. Let me start off by saying conclusively that this is not a rant bash video focused on what we still don't have in game, which is an extensive list, or the skin tone issues, which will hopefully be fixed by December. This is a review of the pack on its own merits. This pack is inspired by two forces inside the community and two ideas outside the community. First, the forces within the community are players, including myself, who have, despite beliefs to the contrary, requested numerous times additional Star Wars content in-game. There have also been frequent requests for a theme park. This pack satisfies those two requests by using two ideas from outside the community. The fictional theme park of Westworld uh, from the series and the movie, and the upcoming Disney immersive two-day hotel cruise ship experience where you adopt the persona and clothing and general demeanor of the world around you, which is so exactingly executed that you can truly believe you are there as you act out your sort of holiday adventure. Does this pack succeed on that point? First, let's touch on the Star Wars tie-in, which has been a sticking point for many people when presented with this pack. Aside from the Millennium Falcon and R2-D2, there's nothing particularly Star Wars about this pack. Versus any sci-fi movie style execution, I mean at the end of the day, the original Star Wars movie sets were such a um, powerful aesthetic that a great deal of sci-fi has followed its model. So honestly, I get it if you hate Star Wars, but this pack is not really dependent on the name. You could have called it anything with the same look and the same gameplay. And while some people might say, oh, this looks like Star Wars, maybe there would not have been quite the overtly hostile reaction to the title. And I say that because so many people have stated, I don't want Star Wars in The Sims. Your adventure vacation revolves around accepting missions from one or more of three factions. Uh, the You have the... Um, uh, essentially the good guys, the bad guys, and the guys in the middle. Uh, again, yes, there are Star Wars names applied to these groups, but essentially that's what you have. Good, bad, middle missions, which you can execute in a variety of fashions involving um, droids if you want, uh, you know, as, an, as a distraction, or like myself, other sims in my household as a distraction. Um, beyond that, you have interacting with the world around you in the form of shops, restaurants, uh, the cantina, and the respective headquarters of the good guys and the bad guys. The cantina is kind of the headquarters of the of the middle ground. There's also the new game of Sabacc, uh, which is a Star Wars in-universe game, but it's fashioned after poker. It's kind of essentially the same thing. Uh, blue milk stall, and of course, um, lightsaber training that ties into the new gameplay options. And uh, there's several new recipes to eat and drink and prepare on your own, um, as well as, you know, the typical build and buy assets and cast assets, which are pretty extensive. The missions have been really entertaining, and especially when treated in a more sandbox fashion. Now, eventually, the appeal of the roleplay missions will fade. Uh, just like any roleplaying style game, that's just what happens. Eventually, you've done it. However, integrating more than one character in the mission or adopting the cloak of one faction to better execute missions of another faction kind of re-simulates that gameplay. I'm currently trying to see if I can balance working with the First Order and working with the Resistance while being a high-level scoundrel all at the same time. We'll see how that turns out. Once the missions are generally done, though, you can still use the world as a vacation world. Uh, like I am, albeit with modifications, and yes, as you can see in some of my pictures and video, I rebuilt large sections of the world, but I always do, and I consider that a large part of the sandbox play for myself. These builds, by the way, uh, are available on the gallery through my, through my, um, through my gallery ID, uh, Jason Sterling RMC, and through a link in the description. I wanted more of a hotel feel rather than a rabbit hole and I wanted more vacation style activities for future use and so that's that's what I've done here 
and future use is pretty easy. I've played it for an extended period and not yet been required to go home, which would seem to imply you can basically live here forever if you want. I mean, so far anyway. So far I haven't been told to go home. So, what's the bad news? It's the usual round of stuff I find fault with in most packs, to be honest. There is very little for kids and toddlers to do, despite it being a Disney-based theme park. And although I effectively used toddlers as part of my new playstyle, or part of my playstyle on the missions, it was utilizing existing abilities, no, nothing new. Uh, kids can train with the new lightsaber, but cannot spar or challenge even each other, let alone adults with it. And with the exception of the one Jawa costume for kids, the cast is somewhat lackluster as far as Star Wars goes, especially again for toddlers. This is not really a costume pack, aside from a few adult masks and makeup. It feels to me almost as though Cass has been too normalized in order to broaden its appeal. There's also way, 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 let me add another, way too much reliance on rabbit holes. You can see here there's like nine of them. Um, again, that's nine. Nine rabbit holes. And this is a 2020 live action game, not something from the mid-90s. This is especially questionable where even a general restaurant build-out with a stall mocked up to look like a quick service restaurant counter would have been far better than the rabbit hole disappearing act that we got. The same goes for the droid shop and the lightsaber place and so on. Which, incidentally, the droid build-out is pretty basic. My son, for one, was a little disappointed that you just chose a head and a torso with no option for the legs or other internal mechanisms. Uh, there are, were also questionable decisions limiting the power of occult life states, what you can take with you to Batu, and the weather on the planet. This is again especially questionable given that it takes extra, extra resources to limit something like that which Maxis is always short of, and the marketing pitch that you the player should buy this and tell your Star Wars story, but then you have to tell your Star Wars story in their way. This also holds true for not being able to bring along pets and familiars, although I did manage a workaround there that you can see in another video if you really want to take either of those with you. Um, that's in another video on my site. Also, I'll link that. I'll link that in the, in the description. And at the conclusion of this video, I'll touch on adding um, weather in world and being able to at least use uh, a broom in the new world using mod-free in-game workarounds. Despite that, overall, is it worth it? I'd say yes, at least as much um, as, say, Jungle Adventure or Strangerville was worth it, um, as the gameplay is kind of set up the same as those two packs. And, in fact, I'd say Batu actually has more replayability than the gameplay, say, in Strangerville, and more ability to be adapted by the player. However, to be honest, I think to maximize the impact of this pack, you'll need to change the builds to suit what you are interested in doing long term. Uh, that's what I did and I'm very happy with it. I'm very happy with the changes I made and um, with what I can do with it. Uh, the world itself is wonderfully executed, very immersive, and in fact better so than the actual theme park at Disney World upon which it's based, I think. Um, I think most anyone can safely ignore the Star Wars aspect and still enjoy it as a sci-fi Westworld styled theme park vacation. Which, if the name was changed to drop Star Wars and instead be the Sims 4 Journey to Batu, that's exactly what it would be. So under those conditions, I think most people who enjoyed packs of this sort in the past at full price will like this one at full price, if not even a bit more. If you really just want the junk teak build stuff and of which there's a lot and maybe the world and clothes and could care less about the gameplay, it might still be worth it to you at full price if you're like me and just really into building. And if your entertainment budget, mind you, is the typical American middle class budget, so the trade-off in cost versus something else you could buy is more negligible. If not, I'd wait for a sale and get it to half price for those items. If you are just pretty much not into the look and sci-fi and Star Wars and, you know, basically The Sims 4 in general, then A, you've probably not made it this far into the review, and B, I wouldn't buy it. You're not going to be happy um, with this pack, I think, in you know, at any price, because it's not significantly different um, in content and scope from previous packs. 
that's it for now. Thanks for watching.